Kent. It's Phil Geraldo. How you doing? Okay, Phil, welcome to the show. From the, He's the national spokesperson for pro-English. I don't know if you heard Tamar, but I'll, I'll just briefly fill you in, uh, Phil. I, I, I did I, hear I, think I did. That, okay, great. So you want to comment? Well, yes. Um, all I can tell you is that uh, with regard to Puerto Rico, uh, we've got 31 states now with what uh, we call official English and government laws. And, of course, everybody ought to be able to uh, learn languages. I wish I was smart enough to learn several languages. But I think as Americans, everybody ought to be proud of their ethnicity and where they're from. But we ought to share that tie that binds the common tongue. And I actually sympathize with the uh, popular Democrat Party of Puerto Rico that uh, is for the Commonwealth status retention because they argue uh, very convincingly that Puerto Rico is a Spanish culture. And probably 98 percent of the people speak Spanish. So why not? Keep the status quo and keep Spanish. Uh, because Puerto Rico is a stepchild. It's a stepchild in the family of nations. They can't vote. They've been a territory of the United States for 112 years, and for 400 years before that, they were a territory of Spain. They want to be something uh, well, rather you know, than lost, caught in between. Although, as statehood they is lost in the last three referendums, the last one being in 1998. Uh, if, if, if the people It's ahead in the polls claim, now, Phil. Well, they're heading to the polls in November. That is correct. It'll be November 6th. Uh, I'd be surprised if, if statehood wins. It's very even Stephen uh, uh, if you look at some polling down there. So uh, my point is if, if, if they want to be a state, why not, why not conduct their government uh, in schools in, in, the, in the common tongue of English? Well, you know, Hawaii entered in 1959, and they brought Hawaiian, uh, the Hawaiian language as the co-official language with English. Uh, why not have Spanish and English as, uh, as co-equal? Well, actually, as you probably know, in Puerto Rico, they both are the official languages now. Right. The, so the what's point wrong is, with that? But the point is, well, no, you've been down there plenty of times, and so have I. Nobody, nobody really knows English. Even Governor Fortuno doesn't speak English much. Well, uh, he, I interview government. him. You're going to hear him being interviewed later in this program, and he does. But tomorrow, why don't you comment well, to I what Phil said? Sing. I know he yeah, speaks English. Hold on, Phil. Hold on. Hold on, Phil. Hold on. Let's let's talk to tomorrow, uh, Jacoby. I, I from do, of course, immigration understand. Work. Americans feeling that that English is the American language and is what unites us, and I'm all for that. But Me you too. don't have to do that in a way that takes away something from other people. I, I agree with you. In Puerto Rico, they, it makes perfect sense to have both languages be official. I don't think that's true in Iowa, but Puerto Rico is different. And, and um, you know, in general, I think what you want to do is say English is the first language. You don't want to go around saying it's the official language. You want to make it the first language. And, of course, make sure that children learn it and, and, and that, that that's what unites us as a country. But, the, again, there are ways of doing that where you're not insulting people and taking away their heritage and asking them to spit on their grandmother's graves. I, I, I hear that. I, I Phil, you want to briefly comment? I've got to take a commercial well, yeah, break. I mean, so no one's spitting. I mean, that's, that, that's pretty, you know, that's nice rhetoric. No one's spitting on anyone's graves. Everyone uh, appreciates the Spanish culture of Puerto Rico. I don't know of anyone that doesn't. But I'm just saying that if you want to be a, a state and, and have the tie that binds, you ought to have English as the language of government in the schools. That is, I, I agree with Tamar that, she at least conceded it ought to be the primary language, but it's not in Puerto Rico. I, 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 well, it's the primary language of officialdom there. It really uh, you know, they, ask Governor Fortuno that. It really, it really well, isn't. We'll Geraldo. ask him. He's going to be on the program in a, in a little bit. I think that uh, Santorum, though, absolutely uh, sabotaged his own candidacy. Uh, he got trounced down there, and, and he was in the running, he ironically, he didn't before pander. He didn't pander. He didn't say what the, what, what the Fortuno well, and his statehood party well, wanted. I don't know what he was thinking. If he was going to appeal to Latino voters going forward, you don't do it by attacking— uh, but you the know, real danger, it's like, it's like in, the, in the mid. Yes, go ahead, Tamar, and then I got Well, the danger is not just what what Santorum did. It's that Romney's coming away from this, thinking I did great among Latinos in Puerto Rico. They all voted for me. It's not going to work that way when it's Mexican Americans in Colorado. I and agree. He's got he's in denial about what he's doing to himself and the party, and what happened in Puerto Rico is encouraging that denial. That's my concern. Uh, I I agree. I agree, Tamar. I've got to go, Phil. I've got to go. Excellent discussion. I want you Thank guys you, back. Geraldo. But let me uh, let me take a break. Uh, thank you both.